Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the strategies that we can use to increase global food supply. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. There are lots of different strategies that we can use to increase food security. Some of these are relatively cheap, low-tech solutions, whereas others are extremely expensive and rely on complex technology. The first strategy that we're going to look at is irrigation. Irrigation is simply the artificial watering of crops to maintain production when the water supply is low or unreliable, taking water from rivers, lakes or reservoirs. Large-scale irrigation is widely used across HICs and also in some parts of Asia where monsoon rains are able to recharge supplies of water. However, it is not used as much across most LICs as the technology needed is expensive, evaporation can be a big issue, and it often leads to over-abstraction of water sources, which cannot recover. An example of this is Lake Chad, which was once the sixth largest lake in the world, but has decreased by more than 90% in area over the last 40 years after being used for irrigation. LICs are more likely to make use of smaller irrigation systems. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the different types of irrigation. We have large scale schemes. These involve dams to control the flow of water, reservoirs to store water, and a network of canals and pipes to transfer water to where it is needed. We also have flood irrigation, which is controlled flooding of fields involving water from rivers or wells being pumped along canals, which are controlled by small dams. This is widely used in rice paddies across Asia. We also have sprinkler systems where water is piped into a central point in a field to sprinkle water to crops. These are used in fields mostly in HICs and they can be moved around to ensure an even coverage of crops. LICs though are more likely to use drip irrigation where water travels through pipes with lots of tiny holes spread out across crops so water can be delivered straight to the roots before it can be evaporated. There are several pros and cons of using irrigation. The main pro is it increases crop yields and therefore income and obviously increases food security as a result. However, large scale systems are expensive to set up and they can lead to over abstraction, which means there is less water for other users and it can lead to the drying out of lakes in the long term. It can also lead to water logging of soil through inadequate drainage or salinization, which is a build up of salts. Let's move on to aeroponics and hydroponics. These are modern techniques of farming that don't require soil. Aeroponics uses air rather than soil to grow plants. The plants are usually suspended in a greenhouse with a fine mist of nutrients and water sprayed directly onto the roots and lower stem every few minutes. Plants grown using aeroponics tend to grow quickly as their roots receive much more oxygen than they would if they were planted in soil. And there is also no risk of the plant roots rotting due to the lack of direct contact with soil and water. Hydroponics are grown in water rather than soil, with the roots submerged into nutrient-rich water. This eliminates the risk of any diseases associated with soil, but it also means that crops such as lettuce can be shipped alive in water, which maintains their freshness. But there are pros and cons to both of these systems. Because water and nutrients are delivered directly to the plant, this kind of food production can be very efficient and enable crops to grow quickly and year round indoors. They also need less space to grow because they can be stacked up and they can be moved around easily. However, they are expensive to set up and run as they require lots of heat and light and the equipment can easily break down. They also need a lot of technical expertise regarding the equipment, but also the exact mix of nutrients needed. The next strategy for increasing food supply is biotechnology. Biotechnology is a genetic modification of plants and animals, e.g. injecting the genes from one plant to another. Most commonly, this is used to make plants that are resistant to drought, pests and diseases, so there are less chance of crop failure, and also resistant to herbicides, meaning that the farmer can spray weed killer onto a crop without harming the crop itself. 
plants have also been genetically modified to increase their nutrient content through increasing their levels of vitamins or proteins and also to increase shelf life and to improve flavour. Biotechnology has also been used in livestock farming. For example, scientists have been able to remove the section of DNA that leaves pigs vulnerable to porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome. This costs farmers more than 1.5 billion a year in losses across Europe. They've also been able to develop an extra gene for chickens, which disrupts the transmission of avian flu. Genetically modified organisms are very controversial, so they are still not widely used to increase food supply in Europe, although they are commonly used in the USA and Australia. So what are the pros and cons? Well, most modifications are to make plants resistant to pests and diseases, so they do increase food security. Plants can also be modified to have more vitamins or proteins to have a better flavour and to have a longer shelf life. They can also be modified to be grown in poor conditions, for example in a drought, so therefore this will also increase food security. But many people are concerned about the possible knock-on impacts on the environment about human health. And the pollen from GN crops is spread the same as any other plants, so there is concern about contamination, for example gene flow and genetic pollution, as well as concerns about pesticide resistance. This leads nicely into the Green Revolution. Biotechnology has played a big role in the Asian Green Revolution, which refers to the period in the 1960s when scientists started to develop new strains of higher yielding seeds for grains, such as rice and wheat. These were known as high yielding varieties or HYVs. These were very successful and saw yields increase by 40% in India and Bangladesh, increasing food security. At the same time, scientists developed new chemical fertilisers, herbicides and pesticides to increase food production further, which was essential at a time of rapid population growth in Southeast Asia. Today, there is a similar green revolution focusing on addressing the issue of rapid population growth and food security in Africa. But what are the pros and cons of the green revolution? Well, the obvious pro is it increases yield and some crops can better withstand drought as a result. Today, the focus is on sustainable farming, such as conserving biodiversity, preserving drought-resistant strains or crop wild relatives. It's also looking at protecting soil and water sources, as well as the well-being of local communities. However, some of the new techniques involved are expensive. And our final technique is appropriate technology. Appropriate technology is also known as intermediate technology and it involves low tech projects that are cheap and managed by the local community, such as drip irrigation schemes like you can see on the screen. This is in contrast to many aid projects which aim to increase food supplies through large scale projects that require expensive technology, specialist skills for operation and maintenance, fuel, spare parts, etc. So while these may increase food supply effectively, they are not appropriate to the needs of the community and often fail once support from non-governmental organisations has been withdrawn. Appropriate technology is what the name implies, accessible to the local communities using it. These projects are set up with a community who are fully involved in the decision making and given the training that they need to launch and run whatever the scheme is. A good example would be the use of drip irrigation systems where a small engine pumps water into pipes which is easy to maintain by local farmers. So what are the pros and cons of appropriate technology? It uses machines and tools which are simple and cheap to operate so is accessible to local communities in low income countries. This approach increases output and food production without putting people out of work which mechanisation often does. However, as it is small scale, it won't increase food supply as much as some other strategies. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on increasing food supply. Thank you for watching.